Hey everybody, this is James P. Wagner here again with Local Gems Press, and you're here for the third part of the Poetry Chapbook information series. Uh, you've probably already watched What is a Poetry Chapbook? Why make a poetry chapbook? So today we're going to talk about how to make a poetry chapbook. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to make a poetry chapbook. There's professional printers, uh, such as just going to Staples, FedEx, Kinko's, etc., or uh, you know, self-publishing it through something like Amazon, uh, you know, Kindles, uh, KDP program, Lulu.com, Blurb.com, etc. Uh, there's a lot of them online now where you could very easily, you know, upload your document, and get it printed. Um, there's even like brochure printers that could basically handle a chapbook when you're looking about the page count. Uh, then there's finding a traditional publisher because there are traditional publishers that do take chapbooks. Uh, which would be going through the whole process to find a publisher that will fit you and match them, et cetera. Uh, and there's even people who print them, uh, you know, through their home computer and they just do it that way. I've seen that. Wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but I have seen some examples where they actually come out pretty good. And then you got the whole limited number thing, uh, you know, but the point is, is there's a lot of different options. So before you could actually get to the point of thinking about any of that, you got to organize your poems. Uh, so figure out how you're going to organize your poetry whether it's uh, you know through theme, topic, uh, chronological, uh, maybe in response to a challenge or uh, you know maybe appeared in your life, et cetera. Uh, but you know chapbooks are uh, smaller length collections, like we said. So typically you know ten to fifteen poems is pretty ideal. Again, depends on the uh, you know the type of uh, the length of the poems really, because you could have a chapbook that's really just one long poem. I've actually seen people do that where they had sort of an epic narrative that was you know just one whole thing. I've seen people do chapbooks that were a hundred poems because they were all uh, you know haiku length. Uh, you know, three lines. So, uh, but, you know, for standard, uh, you know, poem length, usually 10 to 15 is pretty okay. Uh, you know, again, there's tons of different ways to organize it. So that's just something for you to figure out how you want to do, uh, which would also depend on, you know, why you're going about it. Because if you're doing it for mass distribution or just like as a sampling, might uh, change your motivation about why, you know, which way you're going to organize. It. And then, of course, you got the big question, which is, are you going to publish or self-publish? Because uh, there's plenty of options when it comes to either or. Um, and what choice you're going to make is going to kind of change what you need to do because the process for publishing versus self-publishing are pretty much uh, different processes. Uh, the only thing that's really in common is what you need in both cases, which of course is the material itself. Uh, let's say you decide to publish, then first and foremost, you're going to need to actually find a publisher. There are a ton of uh, you know poetry publishers out there. Uh, especially in this day and age online, shouldn't be too hard to find. There are some resources. I'll talk a little bit about them where you can find them. Uh, you know, you're going to want to make sure it's somebody who's going to be publishing what it is that, you know, you have. So uh, they're going to have their own guidelines uh, that you're going to definitely want to pay attention to. And you would submit your manuscript to them for approval. Uh, they may not approve it. In fact, uh, a lot of cases, the the first several times, sometimes first several dozen times people send books for consideration, they get rejected. But if you do your matchmaking really well, uh, you can kind of cut that down. Uh, you're going to send them a cover letter. Uh, they might have manuscript format. They want you to send the manuscript in, et cetera. Uh, and then the book is going to be done, uh, you know, on their terms, pretty much, um, you know, because they're going to have certain things that they kind of do, like, you know, guidelines, specifications. Uh, there might be a longer waiting period, depending on that. Uh, but then the benefit of publishing it is maybe that they will help you actually market it and sell it and, uh, you know, get the word around more. And also maybe help with things like the the formatting or the cover design because you don't really have to do those if you have a publisher usually that's something that they do and then there's the self-publishing or printing it yourself option where you pretty much find a printer or a printing service uh, you prepare the file and uh, you know you have it formatted to whatever it's going to be so if it's going to be like a pocket-sized book say 4.25 by uh, 6 by 9 you would have to get the manuscript formatted into that to send to the printer because they're not going to do any formatting for you you would also need to have the cover art ready uh basically you know your illustration your cover uh, you know your uh, photograph or whatever you have to have it graphically designed into a cover uh, and send it to them because again they're going to print exactly what it is you give them they're not going to do any altering to it like a publisher would and then you pay the fee for you know the copies to be printed now with a traditional publisher you might pay a fee if you want a bunch of author copies um, so that might still be the same because even if they're going to be publishing it for you say you want 50 copies 100 copies etc they're still going to charge you for the copies but of course they should a publisher should charge you about half or less of what the list price is uh, with printing, they're going to give you just the straight up fee of what it costs to print the books. Uh, and then pretty much it's up to you to do whatever you want with them. The things you're going to need in either case, though, are the poems themselves, obviously, uh, an introduction or a forward to the book. Uh, and those are two different things. One of them is usually written by uh, the author themselves, and the other one is written by somebody prominent. 
Uh, chapbooks, they don't really need to have these, but sometimes uh, they do. I've seen them in a lot of different cases. The cover art is obviously a necessity, and uh, depending on if you're going with a publisher or self-publishing, you might have uh, more you need to do with that because some publishers, they'll just do the whole thing for you. Other times they want you to send a picture or a piece of art and then they'll graphically design it. Self-publishing, you just got to have that all yourself. Then there's the back cover matter. Uh, so if you want to have a description of the book on the back or blurbs, like people writing about it, blurbs are typically more for a longer length collection than a shorter one. But I've seen, you know, uh, chat books that have blurbs as well. Sometimes just description of the book is good. And other times you don't need to put anything on the back. Maybe just another piece of art. Totally up to you. And of course, a third person biography, you know, about the author. We all pretty much know these, uh, you know, usually goes in the back of the book. So these are just general pieces of a chat book you need to have, uh, whichever way you're going, pretty much. The important thing is just getting the poems into a book form. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways to get it into a print form. Again, some resources are lulu.com, blurb.com, Amazon's KDP. Uh, don't sell short your local print shops because a lot of those are still out there and they can get things into book form for you. They might even be cheaper than some of these services. Uh, and if you're looking for publishers, you might consider the writer's market or the poet's market. They come out every year, but just so you know, uh, the first few months those come out, they're going to have more accurate listings because after they've been out a few months, then the statistics of what they accept, reject, how many submissions they're getting are going to be a little bit uh, different than what they were when they first came out to you. Duotrope.com is a much more up-to-date resource for that, where you can basically plug in your genre, your subgenre, your theme, et cetera, and it'll match you with a whole list of publishers that are looking for those things. Uh, you know, it costs, uh, I think, 5 or $10 a month to do that, but it's, uh, you know, definitely worth it and it's up-to-date. Uh, so it'll be accurate all year round, whereas the writer's market or the poet's market might only be for like the first quarter that it comes out. Definitely good to look at. But yeah, so either way that you're looking for, whether it's uh, traditional publishing or self-publishing, good luck. Again, there's a lot of different ways to get the, the book out there. And then once you have it in book form, then, it, you know, the sky's the limit with what you can do for it, whether it's just handing it out to hosts uh, to see if they want to feature you, whether it's to actively sell at live readings or try to make uh, partnerships with local bookstores or gift shops or whatever to have them in there. Maybe you've got a big following online that you, uh, you know, kind of want to just market it to via email or through social media. Uh, a lot of different things one can do with them. Maybe you just want to have them as party favors to give out uh, at a wedding. Uh, I've seen that done before too. Everybody's motivation is different, but these are just the, the uh, you know, what, why, and how uh, you get it out. So hopefully you got some good information out of this and we'll see you next time. Take care.